said, I'll put a few shillings on Brooker. The guy looked at him and said, don't bet Brooker. <laughs> well, he's, he talked to me yesterday and said, Ken, what do I have to do? And I said, just go up there and do it like you did before. Ski it. And so far it looks like he is. The arms are windmilling, but he's going for it. He's pressing. He's being aggressive. Standing on those skis, but very rough. The course is so bumpy. Watch those skis all over the place. Very low there. He'll be low coming into the style hang, have to swing wide and try to get back. That's not good. Flew off the bump slightly, exited the style hang wide by the right, left hand fence. And come into the bottom to the interval time. Tucking low. And a good interval. In fact, Ken, that is better than the interval turned in by yesterday's winner, Herman Zerbregan. That's excellent, but he made a small mistake there. He may be low coming across the title. He is. He's cutting, fighting to get back up for that turn. Nice over the bump. He'll have a low speed coming through here, but he can make it up. He's got an excellent interval time, and that is a good thing to see. Working towards. He has this. Must get in a low touch. Pushing towards the finish. I think we're going to see the time from yesterday better. And out. Standing run by Todd Brooker of two minutes, 8.10 seconds, nearly four and a half seconds in front of Boffenbeekler. There he is. Doesn't look too excited. I think he knows he made a mistake on the lower part. But here is the man we want to see. This is Helmut Hoofletter. Won at Val Gardena before Christmas, was fourth here yesterday. Now we'll see. A little bit of trouble there in the first turn. Very rough again. But Hoofletter is so calm lands quietly and notice the arms they're not flying around extreme contrast from brooker who was all over the place brooker is like a a truck out of control coming down a downhill but he's so big and so strong he can control it Hufflinger is a small skier and he must ski smoothly confidently calmly and technically well remember ken in 1983 when brooker won on this course he looked to be out of control the entire way down now brooker's interval is on the left Hufflinger slightly ahead, half a second ahead. This is going to be close. Let's see how Hufflinger skis the house there turn. Nice and calm, skied it well, high in the line. You see him running down where Brooker had to turn back up. Holding a touch, pressing forward. Very compact through the compression turn and nice and quiet, letting the skis come to him, skiing the course well. Listen to this crowd, the time of the lap belongs to Brooker, and Hufflinger has moved ahead of Todd Brooker by 89 one hundredths of a second. So Hufflinger goes into first place with Brooker now second. That was an excellent run by Hufflinger. Helmut Hufflinger, who started first here yesterday and finished fourth, has taken the lead. But here's the man to watch, Switzerland's Peter Mueller. He was fifth yesterday. Well, Peter won the last training run. I felt he was not going to win yesterday's race. He has a tendency to be overconfident when he wins training runs. But he's going to be angry at himself. I think he's going to be coming out, attacking the look, tucking there, driving. This is the Peter Mueller of old. He wants to win this race. Keep the upper turn very well. Up high for the style hunt. Drives around a little bit wide in the turn, but nice and smooth, keeping compact, not letting the course throw him around. Keep the style hunt very well. His ninth season on the tour has eight downhill victories. The time on the left belongs to Hoofletter. Mueller approaches it. Slightly better than Brooker. The three-tenths of a second by Hoofletter. And he's made a mistake. That is going to cost him. Caught the compression in the in the house for turn. Way, way down on the, the side, the side of the shoes of the steel shoes and coming down to the bottom. That will cost him dearly. Definitely, definitely. He knows he's, he's almost he's almost standing up. He knows he has lost the race. He knows he's going to be, be behind Brooker. And he is behind Brooker indeed. He is 1.37 seconds behind Hoofletter. So it's Hoofletter, Brooker, and Mueller. Here is the man that made history yesterday, primarily a slalom and giant slalom specialist, Herman Zerbregan won it. Well, this is very difficult to pull off a double, win two races back to back. You've had so much pressure from the press with questions and so on, but can he do it? He won the race yesterday on the top part. He skied it so well. The first two turns were good. A long flight, but look at him press here. He's a good technical giant pumpkin, very rough. Did not see that well. He didn't absorb the bump, but nice and high. Makes a nice turn into the Stahlhahn. He's smoothly. Sitting back. 
He's not seen as well as he did yesterday out very wide by the fence. Well, watch for his interval time. Yesterday it was just over 141, and today he has bettered it. Zerbrigan very, very close to Hooflander at the interval camp. Now this is going to be very close. Can the experience of a downhiller, Hooflander, overcome the keen ability of Zerbrigan? Very good in the giant fall on the technical disciplines, but he's not as confident in the speed section. Hooflander has had more training. Can Hooflander hold that 200th of a second advantage as he comes down to the bottom? Yes! Unbelievable! Herman Zerbrigan, the 1984 overall World Cup champion, and the runaway leader in 85, is congratulated by Peter Mueller. Zerbrigan has moved into first place. This is Peter Bernsberger, the 26-year-old Austrian. He was third behind Zerbrigan and Heitzer on this course yesterday. Now, he is skiing very well. Nice and smooth through the first turn, standing well on the downhill ski. Compact and quiet in the air. Lands quickly in his tuck through the compression on the bottom. Letting the skis watch them bounce around as they go over that icy, rough upper part of the downhill course. Skied well around the roundhouse turn and into the Stalhan. So steep, so icy. Steps on his skis, standing and stepping off. Handled the exit very well. Ken, the difference in speed between yesterday and today is unbelievable. This is what the course was like earlier in the week when it was 25 or 30 below and very, very fast. His interval time is only the fifth best. It appears that he made a minor error exiting the stall and that hurt through the flat middle section. But he may be able to make up some time in the bottom. Again, he's a downhiller. He's the middle part of his deal shoes well, across the side, side hill, coming through the compression. Just sit back through the compression and fighting to hold that low tuck as he stays in the track and drives toward, towards the finish. Time at the left belongs to Zerbregan and Ernsberger right now in the number five position. Todd Brooker remains third. Ken, did you expect the course would be this much faster? You've been up on it this morning. You said it's faster, but really this much different. I didn't expect this large a difference, although... When you have one race on a course and it's cold, it does speed up, often two to four seconds, it appears it was the larger amount. Bruno Kernan, 23 years of age, from Switzerland, 26th here in the first race. Kernan is having some trouble this year. He's a little bit erratic. He's not confident right now. You see him, he's letting the course come to him. He's sitting back, letting the bumps roll around. He's a very good skier. But well off the line. He was much too low coming into the style, huh? and he'll have trouble on the exit here. He won't carry the speed through the side hill and out onto the flat that he'd like to. Sat back a little bit there. Still to come, Plummer and Gary Athens in the first seed, and he is very, very slow. Curtin is at the interval. Comes through the house for turn. Approaching the side hill, and it's a very steep side hill. You must let the team run straight across. Kenner's seen it well, but it does not look like he has the same speed as some of the earlier racers. Very hard compression. Almost hit his chin on his knees, but he's fighting, fighting for that finish. Fighting to stay in his tuck through that rough, rough, rough terrain. And Bruno Curtin is nearly three seconds behind Zerbregen, and Todd Brooker remains in the number three position. Up next will be Franz Heinzu from Switzerland. Now, he was second here to Zerbriggen yesterday. You Canadian fans might remember that he beat Todd Brooker by one hundredth of a second last year in Val d'Isere. Heinzu beat an excellent race yesterday, and he wants to win, and he wants to win badly. He the first two turns well. Long flight off the mouse volley. Arms were flailing, but he kept his body position low. Let's see how he handles this rough S turn here. Very nice. Very icy. You can hear the skis chattering. A little bit low. Coming low into the style hang, but he fights to get back. Makes a step. Now how will he handle the side hill? Very smoothly. Slid a little bit on the exit. Let's see if it's affected him. Approaching the interval time. The best belongs to Zerbregen and Heinzer rather surprisingly, is nowhere near him. Well, he's younger racer. He's a little bit less experienced, and he didn't see that style and section as well as he may like to, but he's seen the lower part well, and the side hill well. 
going through the compression. Look at him fight to keep those arms forward. Hold that aerodynamic position. Hold that tackle while the legs are like pistons up and down. And Heights are at 2 minutes, 8.55 seconds. Brooker is still third. Zerbregan the leader. Curious yesterday, losing his ski in the first turn. Franz is not skiing well right now, but he has the power, the will to come down and win this race. He's won it four times before. Ken, listen to this tremendous crowd. The noise is almost deafening as Clover comes down this mountain. Well, there's no question that this is Austria, and this is the Hanenkamp, and this is everyone's favorite. They would like to see Franz come down in a blaze of glory, but he slid in the exit of the Stahlheim. That may cost him dearly. Ron Plummer has won four times on this Hunt and Calm course. Approaches the interval. Well off the pace. Two seconds behind. Probably the missing out in yesterday's race, it sprayed on his mind. He didn't even get a chance to see the course, and that hurts you. He, all the other races have had one additional run on the downhill. That extra experience that he didn't get. But he still fights out. He's still a champion. He looks driving towards the finish. Klammer will look forward to Vengen to try to regain his form. And a disappointing run for the defending champion, Franz Klammer. Up next, it's American Billy Charts, and you talk about disappointment. Gary Athens will come number 11, and watch out for Kathleen number 12, and Byrather number 15. Here is Billy Johnson, really, as you said yesterday, Kim, a sad story here at Kitzbühel. Well, really, I think the American team should almost consider pulling him from the World Cup Tour. He's not skiing well, he's not confident, he's doing himself a disservice. Really, he needs to get training, he needs to get back into shape. And you can see, he, he, he's trying, yes, he's trying as much as he can, but he hasn't got the form that he needs to be able to compete at the level he would like to be. He's a champion, he's a World Cup winner, and he's expected to be the best. Way wide in the style hunt. He simply has not seen the course well. Handled the side hill exit reasonably well, but he's got a slower speed than anyone else. And the pressure is really on Johnson, because next week we go to Vengen, where he won his first race last week. The interval time is very, very slow. Sports Weekend will be on the scene one week from today in Vegas. Johnson won at Vegas, then went on, of course, to win the Olympic gold at Sarajevo and two top downhills at Aspen and Whistler. Well, that's good to see what I just saw there. Johnson is tucking, he's pressing, he's trying to win. Hey, he's, he missed the gate. He went off the course and he missed the gate. That is really tough luck. He would have been two and a half seconds behind. A great improvement. Very disappointing after trying very, very hard to see a good race. So the disappointment of 1985 continues for the Olympic champion Johnson. Here's Gary Athens, a 23-year-old from Kelowna, British Columbia. You talked with Gary last night for a long time, Ken. Well, Gary is looking for some advice on what he's got to do to get back going, team better. He's having difficulty. A long flight on the bounce ball, but good. He was quiet. He kept aerodynamic. No problem that he flew a long way. He's much quieter, and this is what we spoke about. He said, think about being calm. Don't try to venture aggression all over the hill. Think about skiing the course. Think about skiing it like Steve Gorski used to see this downhill. And it looks so far that he's doing exactly that. Split out, though, on the exit there. That's not good because he come out under the flat, and really in between, there's no way that you can make it back. As we approach the interval for Gary Athens, he has, I'm afraid, only the 11th best is five and a half seconds behind the leader, Zerbregen. Todd Brooker, if you're just joining us, is currently standing in third place after an outstanding run. He should be pressing. He should be lower. All the others have had a much lower body position. And it's so important, if you want to compete, he's got to keep those shoulders down. He's holding his tuck there, but far too high. Caught an edge there as he approaches the finish. Gary Athens will be just over seven and a half seconds behind the leader, Zerbregen. Gary, 45th prior to Christmas of Val Gardena, and 39th in the first run here at Kitzbühel. But he was relaxed yesterday, Ken. Seemed to be not bothered at all. Here's a fellow to watch, Conrad Kaffelman. Kesselman has a good number, although the course will have begun to deteriorate. He well yesterday, coming fixed, but as he approaches the mouse ball, he's the first to 
turns very well, nice and quiet, into his tuck as he goes down the mouse ball. See how he handles the rough. Look at the way the skis bounce around there. Very, very rough. Approaches the style high, drives in a little bit hard on the skis and a little bit wide in the turn. How will he handle the exit? Skiing smoothly. This is his forte. He has to drive through there to be able to make up time. He's 25 years of age from Lac, Switzerland, was second at Valgardena in December, and is only seventh at the interval, more than a second and a half behind Zerbrink and his teammates. Well, here is where experience pays off. Can he use this lower part of the downhill? He's letting the skis run. Good and compact off the last jump. Nice and relaxed. Letting the bump course, absorbing the bump, holding a low tuck. Letting the skis slide and Look at the way that he bounces around this deal sheet. Catherman, a rather disappointing seventh place. He had two wins in 1983 at Val d'Isere and Val Gardena. And an off year last season has come back strong in the first two races. He was second at Val Gardena, sixth here at Kitzfield yesterday, and is seventh right now. Urs Raber is not going. Michael Mayer from Italy. Urs Raber was supposed to be skier 13. This is Mayer from Italy who fell at Val Gardena but was ninth here yesterday. Mayer skied the upper part of this course very well yesterday and is very fast through the middle. He made a mistake in the bottom part, almost went down at extremely high speed. It would be interesting to see how he handles that. Psychologically, very difficult. Hit the gate there. Had a very tight line. That may have harmed him coming in. Yes, he came in on a much too direct line into the style line. That may have harmed him because you cannot ski. You have to set up through this section and very wide. That will cost you dearly. <laughs> As we watch Mayer approach the interval time with only the eighth bat, Ken, I'm wondering, is the course deteriorating to the point that it's going to be tougher for these lower-ranked skiers once we get past the Byrather to possibly dislodge Todd Brooker? Very definitely. Uh, the course is getting rough. The course is deteriorating today. The best numbers were the early numbers. Mayer having all sorts of trouble coming down those deal shoes. And there's no question, I think that we've got Mike, that Brooker has a very good chance to remain in that third position. Mayer is nearly three seconds behind the leader. Zerbregen is currently in ninth place. If anyone is going to catch Brooker, or for that matter, even Hunt Leonard and the leader Zerbregen, it could very well be the Austrian veteran Hardy Weirather, 26 years of age. He was 10th in a tie with the surprising American yesterday, Doug Lewis, but he's been sharp in practice. Well, Hardy has had his trouble, came out and skied the airport very well yesterday. But he'll have his work cut out for him here. Very nice off the mouse ball, calm, into his tuck. Handles the compression well. Keen very smoothly. Watch that downhill arm. He just stands over the ski and the arm just stays there. Very solid. Little low coming into the Stalheim, but ski nicely. Keen smoothly through the Stalheim and all the exit, the side, icy side hill. Handles it reasonably well. Hardy by Rather has six downhill victories. Last season, though, did not qualify for the Austrian Olympic team and is out of it right now, nearly two seconds behind Zurbriggen. So Brooker looks to be safe in third place, at least during this run. Hardy's very low. He had to turn back up to make that gate in the zeal shoots, and that will hurt him. Losing speed on the lower part of the course. As he comes down the field, he's going to go so fast, 130 kilometers an hour. The eggs are burning, you can see he's tired, and he had to fight to get back into his puck. My Rather, look at this, he lost it on the bottom part of the course, and is only 11. So after the first seed, the top 15 is Zerbringer, Hook Leonard, and Todd Brooker. Ryan Williams and Ken Reed at the famed Hanenkam in Kitzbühel, Austria. This is Andreas Wenzel from Liechtenstein. He'll be 27 in March and was 16th yesterday here at Kitzbühel. Keep that first turn very nicely. With Zubrigan in the front again, let's see if another technical skier can come down and dominate this course. Skiing very nicely. You can, the course is deteriorating. You can see that he's having some difficulty with the roughness of it, the way that the bumps are throwing them around. Very low, coming into the Stahlheim. Ryan Rooker is currently third. Benzel, by the way, can has skied in more than 1,200 World Cup races, yet this is only his 44th downhill. The interval time on the left belongs to Perman Zerbregen. 
who yesterday made history by winning today, trying to make history by winning two in a row, and Benzel is no threat at all to Zerbrigan. Well, he's well off the pace. Perhaps he's thinking about the slalom race already because that's his specialty. He's only in this for the combined point, and although he is a very good downhill skier, very, very difficult on such a tough downhill to be able to handle the training that the other racers go through, the downhillers themselves. They know they're trained to race with downhill. Benzel, three and a half seconds behind Zerbregen, so it is still Zerbregen, Hooklinger, and Todd Brooker in the number three position. Kyle Gruber, who yesterday here at Kitzbühel was 20th, he was 15th at Val Gardena in December. He the first two turns well, over the mouse volley. Stood up, did not fly very far, through the compression, approaching the exit, and through the very rough, icy section, the roundhouse turn, as it approaches towards the style hang. Has to get high and dive down into the style hang. Work towards, back towards the fence. And then carve out across the icy side hill exit. You have a shot of the lower wheel chute. And here he is, approaching the finish. Miles Gruber, whose best result in the downhill was eighth at Sarajevo in 83. The pre-Olympic right now stands number 13. That Miles Gruber, very, very disappointed with his run right now. And again, it is Zerbregen leading Hooklinger and Todd Brooker. Still to come, we have the other Canadians. Belchick, Don Stephen. Here is Stephen Lee and the layup on the course. This is Stephen Lee, the 22-year-old Australian. Coming down through the deal shoot. Keeping his body position low. He rolls his shoulders over a little bit more. Sat way back. Touched his bum on the snow. These are going up. So rough. Coming close to the finish and he'll be over 210. So Stephen Lee, nearly three and a half seconds behind the leader, the amazing and runaway World Cup leader, Herman Zerbregen. From Switzerland, this is Silvano Nelly, 24 years of age. He was 19th yesterday, so he's improved on that with the 15th best time at the interval. He's having a difficulty there. So icy in that house for a turn, the hand went up. But holding his tuck, fighting to get his tucks across the wheel shoes, that's good. He may make up some time because many of these earlier races have made some mistakes. And it's so rough coming through that compression. It's a double compression with two bumps. Time on the left belongs to the leader, Zerbregen. Hooklinger is second. Todd Brooker is third. And Brooker will remain in the number three position as Melee has gone into the top 15. Well, Ken, I said that uh, Dean Alberto Idoni, 22 years of age from Tulio, Italy, was 17th here yesterday. Well, they've got a young contingent that's really skiing hard. They're training, they're trying to rebuild. They do have Michael Meyer as, as an example to lead them on. Very similar to the situation that the Canadians are in with Todd Brooker, because Brooker and Meyer ski very much alike. But they're learning, they're gaining experience, and today it's so tough. Each position at the interval time, three seconds behind. It's very difficult to race twice on such a demanding downhill. It's really oh, almost caught an edge in the side hill. You know, it's interesting, Ken, to look at the results from past years. Idoni was ninth here in 1984 and is ranked only 24th in the world. The time on the left is Herman Zerbregen, and Idoni will not be in the top seed the first 15. He stands in the number 17 position, more than four and a half seconds behind Herman Zerbregen. The Swiss fans are cheering. The Italian fans are looking for this man, Mauro Cornaz. His first race at Kitzbühel yesterday tied for eighth place with his teammate Michael Mayer. Not a good turn there. Slid out on the ice. Very slow coming into the house first. And as he approaches the interval time, it's probably cost him quite a bit. Let's see how he handles the lower part of the downhill. Well, he's in the top 15, but he is more than two and a half seconds behind Zerbregen. His sixth year on the World Cup Tour, Ken, you know, it's interesting. 
prior to yesterday, he'd only been in the top 15 once. He comes here, and yesterday ties for eighth place. Well, sometimes when you've had good training and, and the, there has been limited training for most of the team, you get confidence, you come on, and even in the toughest of downhills, you can pop in a good result. He's not in the top 15 today in the number 16 position. For those of you just joining us this afternoon in the first race here at Kitzbühel, as we look at Doug Lewis, he was high for 10th with Byrath yesterday. The race got faster as it went on. The conditions improved yesterday. It is not been this way today. Now, Lewis, he that first turn very well. Interesting story here. He hurt his ankle last night playing basketball with the American team. He's been skiing very well, has had three top 10 results including Whistler at the Molson World Downhill last year, and he's well off. That must be affecting him. He's probably got a very sore ankle. So although Doug Lewis is skiing well, fat back there. He's going to be wide on the field, too. You can see him having the car back up, barely made the gate. So it's disappointing to have a minor nagging injury like that that you don't even suffer while you're ski raping. But he's skiing well, and he'll be back in Bengen next weekend probably to ski into the top 10 again. He has been the lone bright spot for the Americans so far with the disappointing performances turned in by Bill Johnson, ninth at Dal Gardena, 10th yesterday, 17th though right now. Herman Zerbregen, you see him in the upper right-hand portion of the screen right now leading Hook, Leonard, and Brooker, and the way this course is deteriorating, Ken,